how much um, does it cost to book a like a session? You could pay anywhere from sixty dollars to two fifty. Our average client spends about three hundred per hour. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, what's the difference between sixty and three hundred? Sixty is just audio. You're okay. just starting out, right? Mm -hmm. Different studios also have different prices. LA is a little more expensive because of the landscape. Um, but we kept our prices low on purpose because we know that the average podcaster that's watching us or wants to start up, they may not have all the bread. Mm -hmm. Then we got y'all who may spend four figure numbers when you need mobile shoots. But you know what I'm saying? Your podcast is bringing in more. Horrible spends more as well because we need more bells and whistles. But if you just need baseline audio, 60 bucks. If you just we want one angle, 150. Like we've made it pretty easy and we never raised our prices either. Oh, okay. So, like, if we have a four camera set up here, but if it was like a two camera, that, that would fluctuate. Yeah. All right. So, I remember when we, you guys were starting, it was just that one studio and then this was getting built out. Mm -hmm. You went over on that one. This is a bigger studio. Mm -hmm. Is it the same price point or was it like, all right, now I know the, the price that I need to be at to make sure that this is functional? We kept it at the same price point. So, yeah. it was 50 again. Yeah. Yeah. So we we never raised until now our newest location in Midtown. Yeah. And that one's even larger than this. Uh, it's a little bit more premier. And I think the only reason why it's a little bit more is just to offset. I don't want everybody rushing to the new one. Mm -hmm. So it's like just to keep it balanced where it's like we still have clients that love coming here. But then also, you know, when something's sparkly and new, people want to try well, to go there. I would assume, and this is probably right, the cameras are the most expensive piece in here. Right. Mm, cameras, computers, like yeah. I, so, like, if for the yeah. people who can't see, like, what are what are the things that are needed to make this thing functional? Obviously, cameras. I so we got the the Shure SM7Bs. Yeah. What else? So, so it was important for me to like, you know, how uh, new tech startups they want to disrupt the market or whatever. So I working in production for as long as I have been, I saw all the things people were doing wrong, and I saw also how uh, like. Hollywood and other places overcharge for a lot of stuff. So like I just found that middle balance where it's like, okay, let me get the highest end, let's say camera, but I can go for a cheaper lens to offset the price. And then the quality doesn't really drop very much and I can keep costs down. So that was like one of the things that was very important. And it's like a lot of other studios, they look cheap and I didn't want that. So I wanted us to look premier because like that's going to be the main thing that sells the studio. But then also... Uh, I can't have like, you know, red cameras, like shit that you use for movies because then we would just be go broke. But like, Alex making the choice to spend that much in equipment, I think is the biggest reason we flourished. Yeah. We fought about that a lot. I'm like, uh, we only what? have this much to spend. Why are you spending that? Just get some cameras. We cool. Everybody finna come to us anyway. And he was like, no, but nobody has these. And it's true. When you look at other studios, they almost have like that webcam-y look sometimes. And so I was like, but we're going to take so long to pay ourselves back. And he just had a lot of faith in volume. And he was right. Mm -hmm. Because it's true. A lot of studios don't have this because it costs way too much. Having $10,000 cameras is ridiculous. One camera? Like, it's crazy. But no one else could get it for that price. And so instead, whereas $150 was kind of cheap, now we've got 10 people a day at 150. Mm. Whereas if another studio had that, they may have been charging 500 a session, which is probably what you should be paying for these. But we ended up just getting people to come in. And so it's great because you could see a podcaster like yourself have your show on a set like this and then someone who may only get 100 views, but they're happy to be able to do that too. So it, the fact that they could work up to it is really the thing. That's why it's like low-key a little fubu for us, like for podcasters, by podcasters. Mm -hmm. Because we knew it costs too much to make something look nice. So what about, um, what are, what's the other revenue models? You have brand partnerships? Yeah, so that actually worked out for us really well because we started learning what we were spending money in and what was costing us the most monthly, quarterly, and annually. One thing that was happening was lenses So Al and mics. So Alex literally started reaching out to all of the companies that, you know, were big in cameras or big in audio and being like, yo, this is our studio. Everybody's going to use it. You need to be giving us free shit. Um, shout out to Tiana. She was no, managing our exactly like that, but <laughs> basically. <laughs> Whatever. Like I went to a lot of those conventions where it's like you have all of the camera, audio, lighting, all those play bill, and just face to face and it's the best thing. And then you tell them about the studio and then they want to have a relationship with you because they know that, hey, if you have a show like EYL and they're bringing all these people, people are also looking at how it's being done. 
Mm. And so you know, so we have a brand partnership with Sigma, Black Magic, even water, our soda, like we have partnerships like that because people know that people are going to come in here, look around and see what's being used. Sigma for the lens, Black Sigma. Magic's the camera. Yep. What about are we are we here or I'm not even going to mention them for the No, most. not not uh, yet. All right. Not yet. You had Rode, I thought. Uh, a road for our wireless mics, uh, this pH water. But like, that's the thing. We found out how much we were spending in like beverages alone. And it was like, what? Like, we this is too much money. So now we probably save $20,000 a year across the studios just having free beverages for clients, which is just, it's a small little thing that you don't think about. But like, truly, that was it. I mean... Uh, the next one, like I'm working on, is a Wayfair partnership. We spent mad bread in like furniture, yes. and I learned that from even, uh, you know, working with Kenya Barris. Rich niggas don't pay for nothing. They don't pay for Ubers, nothing. They put them credits right in your account. And the more I've been around wealthy people, that strategy, and it's not like Kenya Barris, the hundred millionaire times over, is hounding down Uber. Your team is figuring out how to use your platform, your influence, and be like. Yeah, you want this person to be riding in these types of SUVs, they should have this. It's like, that's the thing. So Alex and I kind of had to learn how to do that. Mm. We've never paid for marketing or PR. So it's like, okay, how are we supposed to do this? So using our own profile to kind of leverage everything else. So let's talk about Kenya Barris. I mean, this is obviously a relationship. When I think of you, I mean, the first time I met you, it's always been about the business of podcasting. It's always been business with you and it's podcasting specifically. How did you develop that relationship and what did you... Do you currently exist in, in the Kenya Barris yeah. world? So um, I was at a party. I walked in and Kenya was the first person there. And he was like, yo, are you, are you a horrible decisions? Are you wheezy? And he said, I'm Kenya Barris. And I'm like, uh, nigga, I know. <laughs> and <laughs> he asked me to take a picture, which I thought was hilarious. He's like, bruh, you dubbed me because he asked for tickets to a show in L.A., and I like wrote back or some shit and I said it was sold out and he wanted to bring people from his office. They loved horrible. So we start vibing. He tells me about his Audible deal. And uh, he's like, yo, I need someone to run it. Like I'm filming TV. I have my music division. Like I want someone to run it. And I honestly believe that WTF Media, if not for being built that six months prior, there was no way I could have done that job. So, and Alex helped me so much. So basically took on the job, making podcasts easy. But when it came to building the landscape, difficult. And it's great because I've literally funded all my businesses down to my TV show through the others. So Horrible brought me to Kenya Barris, right? Then we've got to build studios. I hire Alex. Alex becomes, you know, the audio producer for all of the projects and building out structurally how things will look. You know, we created a sound system for him in his loft, which was the studio that Gangsta Grills was filmed out of. WTF Media then produced Gangsta Grills because I had to hire, you know, a team. Mm -hmm. So it's been great right now. I mean, I'm, I'm working on Kenya's other podcasts for Audible and producing all them, EPing them. And it's an amazing relationship and partnership because what he really showed me is that you can... You can't exist outside of your element. Kenya hired a podcaster to run his podcast division, and it was the smartest thing he could have done. Because whenever I was on Zooms and meetings for him, it was all film and TV people. And they're talking in movie and TV language. Mm -hmm. They're thinking we have to spend $20,000 a shoot. I know that's not true. You giving me millions of dollars in a budget. I'm like, nigga, I'm going to pay myself. <laughs> what the fuck? But like, it's really that type of shit. These big entities and these big companies don't understand how rat grueson grassroots podcasting is. So when I came in, I was able to really reinvent that for him and really show like, hey, like this is what we should be doing. And it's been amazing. Like, I mean, I posted a picture with Malcolm Gladwell and him the other day. And I'm like, I cannot believe podcasting brought me here, bro. Like it's, it's a trip because what's happening now, people like us that were normal people that became famous from podcasting are the outliers word to Malcolm Gladwell, but like, seriously, now it's the celebrities and the celebrities are getting $2 million to make a show. And they're probably going to spend half a million in production. That's crazy. Making a podcast for a year does not cost that much, but you give me half of it. I'll tell you what to do with it. And mm -hmm. that's really what's happening, you know? Mm -hmm. So Alex and I have made our most money from the largest deals like that. Mm -hmm. Not particularly Kenya Barris, like I'm salaried, right? But, um, but it's stuff like that. It's the big company that comes in like, yo, 
let's just say it's a bank. We had a meeting with a bank, right? Huge bank. I would say we all probably have the card in our wallet. They were given a certain amount of money a year to make financial videos for kids. So they know exactly how much they have. Hey, what do we do with this? It's a six-figure number. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to probably give you $1,500 to go home with. So you felt like you saved. But at the end of the day, you like... Didn't, you didn't tell them to call on your leisure? What do you mean? Like, you said you know what to do with it. Like, you didn't tell them, oh, I know the guys you should call. They, they know already every- had their... <laughs> it was a sponsored <laughs> podcast by Bleep. But it's it's things like that. It's like being able to be trusted by companies. So that type of partnership is like really what makes us money. Granted, being in here is amazing and making people's dreams come true by them having their own show and finding a voice is dope too, but it's the big fucking bucks. So know? when you say that, when you are a consultant to people, companies to consult on their podcast divisions? Pretty much. I mean, as a production company, that's what we do when we take a call, right? It's like we figure out your needs, we figure out how you're going to build something. And they probably ask... Two other companies. So you're shooting it for them. Yeah. Shooting like, it. S- start to finish. Yeah. They, they so give, it's like they just have an idea and they're like, hey, can you make it happen? So we'll come up with concept, how it's going to be shot, the look of it, shoot it, edit it, deliver it to them. Might even pair you with a co-host. Yeah. We might say we know people. You make social clips. Yeah. Everything. 